In this video, we are going to learn about the major peninsula rivers of India. I am going to show you the exact place of their origin to the place where they drain and also in between a few important places where the rivers pass by. Just to give this video some structure, I have made the timestamps available in the description. Feel free to skip over and save some time if you feel like it. Before I begin, I want you to watch this video on Peninsula Mountains of India. I will put the link of that video in the description. After watching the video, you will understand the land terrain of the Peninsula Plateau. Once you have some idea about it, then it will be easier for you to understand the river pattern because rivers flow with the slope of the land. Hence knowing the topography is equally important. Alright, I hope you have watched that video. So without any further ado, let's begin. The peninsula rivers either drains in the Bay of Bengal which is on the eastern side or in the Arabian Sea which is on the western side. Keeping this in mind, we will first learn about the west flowing rivers. The first one is Narmada. Now this river is actually part of central India. It originates from the Amarkantak peak in Madhya Pradesh. Amarkantak peak lies near the eastern Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh border. Or you can say it is also the northeastern end of Satpura range. However, the exact source is the Maikal Hills, which are an eastern part of the Satpuras in Kavardha district of Chhattisgarh. Hence, the source of the river is right on the hilly border of Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. From there, the Narmada river flows right through the strait of Madhya Pradesh. Here is the Vindhya range and here is the Satpura range. In between, the river Narmada flows due to a natural land depression which exists due to both these ranges. The river flows along the northern slope of the Satpura range. Satpura also forms a natural border between the states of Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra. On reaching the western border of Madhya Pradesh, the river flows along the Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra border for about 30 to 40 kilometers and then continue to flow along the Maharashtra and Gujarat border for about 50 kilometers. And finally, the river enters fully into the state of Gujarat and flows towards the district of Bharuch where it finally drains into the Arabian Sea near the Gulf of Khambat. It is the largest west flowing river of the peninsula. It is also known as the lifeline of Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh for its huge contribution to the state of Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh in many ways. The second river is Tapi or Tapti. Even this river is part of central India. It originates from Multai in the Betul district of South Madhya Pradesh. Now this region is also the eastern central part of Satpura range. The river flows westward, crossing the Satpura range in the center. I want you to understand the land slope and how the river is flowing in the southern slope of Satpura range, which also forms a natural border between Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra. The river continues to flow along the Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra border for about 50 to 60 kilometers and again flows back into the state of Madhya Pradesh and continues to flow around 70 to 80 kilometers before entering completely into the state of Maharashtra. The river then continues to flow westward in Maharashtra for about 230 kilometers and enters into the state of Gujarat and heads towards the city of Surat and finally drains into the Arabian Sea near the Hazira mangrove. The third river is Mahi. It rises from the Vindhya range in Madhya Pradesh. It flows northwards at first into the Vagat region of Rajasthan and then takes the southwestern coast by taking a U-turn and enters into the state of Gujarat to join the Gulf of Khambat. So most of its course lies in the Gujarat state. The fourth river is the Sabarmati. It originates in the Aravali range of the Udaipur district of Rajasthan. It then flows in the southwest direction and enters the state of Gujarat. The river flows through the city of Ahmedabad and drains into the Gulf of Khambat. Now we will look at the peninsula rivers that drain into the Bay of Bengal. The first one is Mahanadi. It rises from a place called Sihava in the Raipur district of the central eastern Indian state of Chhattisgarh. The river then flows towards the north and then east direction. It then enters the state of Odisha from the Raigarh district of Chhattisgarh. After entering Odisha, the river is held by a dam called the Hirakud Dam. 
It is a multi-purpose dam located near to Sambalpur district of Odisha. The river then enters into the city of Katak on the eastern side of Odisha. Before entering into Katak, the river passes through the hills of Eastern Ghats. Here you will find many discontinuous small mountain ranges. After reaching Katak, the main stream of Mahanadi gets divided into several distributaries. These all distributaries form the Mahanadi Delta, which is one of the largest deltas in India, and it brings a massive amount of alluvial deposits. The Mahanadi drains into the Bay of Bengal near Paradeep, which is a major seaport town and a municipality in Jagatsingpur district of Odisha. The second one is River Godavari. It is the longest river in Peninsula India. It is also known as Dakshin Ganga, meaning South Ganges. Now this river originates near Trimbakeshwar mountain range of the Western Ghats in Nashik district of Maharashtra. From there, it starts flowing towards the east till it reaches the border of Telangana. From there, the river flows further east for about 10 kilometers along the Maharashtra and Telangana border and finally enters fully into the state of Telangana. It then continues to flow east until it reaches the extreme southeastern region of Maharashtra border. The river again continues to flow along the Maharashtra and Telangana border for about 50 kilometers until it reaches the border of Chhattisgarh. And thereafter, the river continues to flow along the Telangana and Chhattisgarh border for about 25 kilometers and takes a southeast turn and then again fully enters into the state of Telangana. The river then reaches the eastern border of Telangana and enters into the state of Andhra Pradesh. The river continues to flow further southeast. Upon reaching the city of Rajamandri, Godavari River splits into a number of distributaries and forms the Godavari Delta. However, you will find two major streams. One stream heads towards the Andhra Pradesh and Puducherry border from the town of Yanam and finally drains into the Bay of Bengal. The second stream also drains into the Bay of Bengal in about 100 km to the south. In Andhra Pradesh, the towns and cities that fall on the western side of the Godavari comes under the West Godavari district and the towns and cities that fall on the eastern side of Godavari comes under the East Godavari district. The delta of the Godavari river is home to the Koringa mangrove forests and Koringa wildlife sanctuary. It is the second largest stretch of mangrove forest in India. The third river is Krishna. It is the second longest river of peninsula India. The river rises from the western Ghat near Mahabaleshwar peak in Maharashtra. It is not far from the coast of the Arabian Sea. It is around 70 kilometers away. The river then starts flowing in the southeast direction and enters in the state of Karnataka near the Mangavati village in Belgaon district of Karnataka. Here the river naturally acts as a border between the state of Maharashtra and Karnataka for about 15 kilometers. It then fully enters into the state of Karnataka. It again continues to flow southeast and enters into Telangana near Deosagar in Raichu district of Karnataka. Here the river becomes a natural border between Karnataka and Telangana for about 35 to 40 kilometers before entering fully into the state of Telangana. Inside the state of Telangana, the river flows across the south of Mehbubnagar district for about 100 kilometers. It then reaches the border of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. The Sri Salem Dam is constructed on the river Krishna in between Karnul district of Andhra Pradesh and Mehbubnagar district of Telangana. Now this region also consists of the Nallamalla forest, which is part of the Eastern Ghats. The river then continues to flow across the Eastern Ghats and along the southeast border of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh state for about 300 kilometers, and then enters fully into the state of Andhra Pradesh from Krishna district. As you can see, the name of the district is also based on the name of the river. It then passes through the city of Vijayawada and the river turns into a braided channel before draining into the Bay of Bengal near the deltaic island of Devasima. The fourth river is Kaveri. Talakaveri is the place that is generally considered to be the source of the river Kaveri. It is located on Brahmagiri hills near Bhagamandala in Kodagu district of Karnataka. This place is closer to the border of northern Kerala. It flows eastwards crossing the western Ghats. 
the river then flows towards the city of Mysore through the town of Srirangapatna. The entire town is enclosed by the river Kaveri to form a river island. You will also find the famous Srirangapatna Fort, which is also called as Tipu Sultan's Palace, on this small river island. The river continues to flow east. It then flows along the Karnataka and Tamil Nadu border for about 70 kilometers and finally enters the state of Tamil Nadu from the extreme southeastern corner of Karnataka. Upon entering Tamil Nadu, the river becomes a major source of the Stanley Reservoir, on which you will find the Mettur Dam. The river then continues southeast direction and heads towards the ancient city of Trichy or Tiruchi. The river continues to flow east and finally drains into the Bay of Bengal at Pumpuhar Beach. So these were the main rivers of Peninsula India. They together form the Peninsula River System. The Peninsula Drainage System is older than the Himalayan one. This is evident from the broad, largely graded shallow valleys and the majority of the rivers. The Peninsula Rivers receive water only from rainfall and water flows in these rivers in the rainy season. However, few rivers flow throughout the year. Therefore, these rivers are both perennial as well as seasonal. I hope this video was informative. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.